Hi guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a 48 volt 20 amp hour battery without using a spot welder. And to do that, I'm going to be using the battery modules from my battery building kits I designed that allow you to build a battery without a spot welder. These are called maker batteries and if you want to follow along with the steps that I'm doing, you can check out a kit at DIYbatteries.com. Alright, now let's go build a battery. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is measure the voltage of all of your modules using a voltmeter. This will make sure that they're all the same voltage and that all of your modules are ready to go. It doesn't matter as much what the exact voltage is, just that they're all the same. Next you're going to alternate your modules with positive up on one end and then negative up on the next, and then you're going to offset them like you see here. Then you're just going to go ahead and hot glue all of your modules together. You don't have to go nuts with the hot glue, just make sure you've got enough to basically hold them together. In the end, we're going to heat shrink the entire pack, so this is just to keep things together in the meantime. The kit also includes positive and negative sticker labels that I like to use just to help me keep everything straight while I'm working on my battery. You can also go through and actually write the cell numbers and positive and negative on the cells as well. This is just another helpful step to help keep everything straight while you're working on it. And now we're going to start tinning our nickel strips here. Now it's very important to tin in between the cell and not on top of the cell. We're going to stay in between in each spot between every set of cells and on all the modules. And to do this we're going to make sure we're using a nice hot iron. We're going to clean it with a brass sponge or a wet sponge. That way when we tin each of these spots we're only actually making contact for maybe two seconds or so, you know, a very short period of time. So I'm going to keep cleaning the tip of my soldering iron and making sure it's hot so I can do a very quick contact period. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do the first few modules here, tinning in between every set of cells. And then I'll cut out my nickel strip to make some strips that are long enough to reach between two sets of cells. And now I'm going to solder the series connections between the positive end of the first module and the negative end of the second module. Now the process here is to add a little bit of solder onto the nickel strip, merge that solder pool with the original tinned spot, and then hold that nickel strip down with, I'm using a chopstick, but any non-conductive tool will work here. Then the same thing on the second end. Add a little bit of solder, merge the pools, and then hold it down with a non-conductive tool. The whole process should only take a couple seconds. Here you can see a close-up again, just adding a little bit of solder here, merging those two solder pools, and then holding the nickel strip still while the solder continues to cool. And if you do it this way, it should be a very quick process, and you'll transfer very minimal heat through two sets of nickel strips to the end of the cell, and then to the cell itself. Now I'm going to continue by tinning the next two sets of modules. And on the next series connections, you'll notice I'm skipping a set of modules. I'm going to do between positive 3 to minus 4. I'm going to continue in this way, making series connections between every two consecutive sets of modules. And then I'll go back on the other side of the battery and make the series connections between the ones that I skipped. So now I can flip the battery over. We're going to go back and do those next set of series connections. And here I'm just going to continue by tinning all of the spots in between the cells. Remember, we're not going to tin on top of the cells. We're going to stay in between them. And then I can make my series connections. Here I'm going to be going between plus two and minus three because I started between plus one and minus two on the other side. Once I've made all of my series connections, I can glue my BMS onto the positive end of the pack by the 13th cell. And then I'll take the thick red wire that comes with the BMS and I'll just measure out how far I need to cut back and strip that wire so that I can solder that wire onto the 13th cell group. Once I've stripped it back, I can go ahead and start soldering it on. Again, soldering in between the cells because I don't want to transfer too much heat to the cells themselves. And now I'm going to flip the battery back over so I can reach the negative end of the first cell group. And I'll take this black wire from the BMS, measure how far back I need to strip it, and then solder it on to the negative end of the first cell group. Now I'm ready to do the small BMS wires. Here this first red wire is going to get soldered to the positive end of the 13th cell group. And then each wire afterwards is going to get soldered to the positive end of the next lower group. So I'll do the positive end of the 12th group, then this next wire will be the positive end of the 11th group, then the 10th, the 9th, and 8th, going all the way down. So the second to last wire is going to get soldered to the positive end of the first group, and then that last wire, the thin black wire, is going to get soldered to the negative end of the first group. And now that my BMS is connected, I can take that adhesive black foam that comes in the kit, and I can wrap all the way around my battery just to make a nice protective layer. 
this will end up trapping just a small amount of heat, but it will give us a much nicer, more padded surface to our battery, which will help with any bumps that we take on our bike. And then I can slide the battery inside of the first piece of heat shrink, and then I'll use either a hairdryer or a heat gun to shrink that shrink wrap. A hairdryer would have to be on the high setting, but a heat gun you'll want to use on one of the lower settings so that you don't actually melt the heat shrink. And then you can take the second piece of heat shrink and slide it on at a 90 degree angle to the first piece so you can seal all six sides of this battery. And again, just make sure that if you're using a heat gun, you start with a fairly low setting. And of course, you don't want to forget to put on your label. Now, I hope you found that video informative, informational, and helpful. If you want to follow along and you like these kits, you can pick up your own at DIYbatteries.com. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up, and you can subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.